It's an observable and confirmable fact that urban divorce rates across the globe, independent of country and continent, are much higher than rural ones. And a while back, Barbarossa, in a video I've mentioned several times already about uh, traditionalist relationships, uh, brought this up to uh, a limited extent briefly, and he talked about um, basically the textbook fact that mechanization uh, adds or uh, adds uh, helps to enable uh, divorce on the part of women, and I'll get to that later. But uh, the statistics which you can get from the UN, I'm going to read off a bunch of them from the UN from the years 2002 to 2006, are consistent across the board. And the UN has stats, unfortunately not by gender, they don't have it by gender, but we already know that worldwide women initiate divorce most of the time. We don't need to look at that, that's been done a thousand times. Uh, that to the extent that the information could be gathered from different, some countries don't have available information, it seems to be uh, consistent. So um, if we look at El Salvador, random country, for the year 2002, we have a total, uh, sorry, a total divorce of 4,179, urban 4,052, rural 127, which uh, in the year 2006 rose to urban 4,722 to rural 241. Mexico, 2002, urban 52,589 versus rural 2,626. Uh, of course, it rose in 2006 as well, uh, as compared to 2002. Um, let's look at um, Korea, for example, which I've talked about recently. 2002, urban divorce rate uh, was uh, 117,511 versus rural 25,600. Um, Mongolia. <laughs> 2002, 583 uh, urban versus 105 rural. Of course, much, much smaller numbers, but nonetheless, it's below the rural the divorce rate is below urban. And uh, we can see it in Europe as well. Let's look at Bulgaria. 2002, uh, 8,613 urban divorces versus 1,584. Um, in 2006, this rose to 12,153 uh, urban divorces in Bulgaria versus 2,662 in rural areas. And uh, it goes on and on. Uh, I think uh, we <laughs> don't need to look at too much more, although I suppose we could look at uh, one more. Why don't we look at... Iceland, of all places, 500, and it's not very heavily populated, but 504 divorces in 2002 versus 25 rural, um, and so on and so forth. So all the information is there. You can have a look at it. I'm going to provide a link to this, obviously. Um, but um, yeah. so across the board, irrespective of country, irrespective of continent, uh, rural divorce is much lower than urban divorce. Sometimes uh, the numbers aren't that great, but in countries like Mongolia or Iceland, there isn't a very large population to begin with, so that explains that. One of the possible theses that could be offered, that Barros has already offered uh, for this, uh, is that uh, mechanization, uh, along with a lax uh, or a, a laxing or a loosening of divorce procedure law, uh, creates an environment where uh, women are more likely uh, to divorce. And I will get to that in a second. Just to add a bit more information, so there was a, uh, a paper done, a very rigorous one, in, in Denmark of all places. And Denmark is often uh, voted by the United Nations as one of the, if not the healthiest nation in the world. Uh, read off the abstract. We show that w with Danish data that of the couples who married in the city, the ones who stay in the city have a 23% higher divorce rate than the ones who move to non-urban areas. Uh, similarly, for the couples married outside the city, the ones who move to the city are more likely to divorce. Um, this correlation can be explained by both causal and assorting effect. We disentangle them by using the timing of events approach. In addition, we use information on father's location as an instrument. 
We find that after allowing for sorting, the effect of living in the countryside on the divorce hazard drops substantially and loses statistical significance. So this is a very long paper, and I don't have the time in this video to read it all off, and there's a lot of technical information there as well, but I would suggest you have a look at it. It's interesting. Uh, finally, in, uh, the final part of the paper really is, uh, well, it's, it, I think that they're missing the mark, uh, or it's, it's typical that they're missing the mark. They're not talking about which, uh, which something I think that they should be talking about, First off, it's not broken really down. There are statistics and stuff involving different ge the genders, but it's not broken down along those lines. We already know from the previous reference I mentioned in one of my other videos that uh, in Denmark, women initiate two-thirds of divorce, typical. So we already know that. Um, and I will offer a reason for Denmark in every country as to why uh, I believe urban divorce rates are much higher. Uh, and finally, uh, China the great traditional China, uh, an article written by Chen Xinxin, I believe, that's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure, a women's, women's Re Institute researcher at the All China Women's Federation, so you guess a slant on this, and she talks about this a bit. Um, so it goes on, in the countryside, things have changed, free choice rather than arranged marriages are being promoted due to social and economic progress. Rural women have more life choices, particularly those who migrate to cities. Working in the city broadens their horizons, bringing them economic independence. They consequently expect to be mistresses of their own fate. Many of them disdain to marry fellow rural dwellers, but are frustrated that traditional prejudice uh, makes them the last choice of marriage partner for urban men. This situation is likely to continue for a long period. Thanks to economic development, more equal status for women, the establishment of social security for seniors, and education on reproductive science and rural convention of early marriage and lots of children is now being rejected. Endowment insurance for rural residents is having far-reaching influence on farmers' attitudes towards having children. Gender imbalances have made it harder for men from poor households to find marriage partners. In depressed areas, the cost of marrying is ruinous to the man's family to the extent that many simply cannot afford it. As farmers attach supreme importance to having a family and offspring, some risk the cheaper and more convenient alternative of buying wives. The divorce rate in rural areas is likely to remain low as divorce deprives rural women here, pay attention, as divorce deprives rural women of this, some of the basic means of production, such as land. Those that work in township enterprises, however, have more freedom. For the sake of family solidarity, husbands now tend to treat their wives more fairly, where we heard that before. Uh, the extra that husbands treat their wives poorly, namely. Uh, the extramarital affair is an alluring but risky concept to rural women, one that could bring turbulence and to and inflict calamity on their lives, so they generally desist. Uh, so, very gynocentric, obviously. So I've read all of that off, and I want to now talk about the theories behind it. So. I think there are two theories we need to uh, bring into um, bring up, uh, bring into bring into sort of existence, and 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 essentially meld. I see this as a melded in theory. So Barbaros has offered the idea of mechanization. Um, mechanization is quite an abstract word. I mean, it can mean anything from the transformation of unpaved roads to paved roads with complex. Um, traffic uh, taking place, uh, cars, lorries, buses, and so on, uh, to uh, bullet trains um, going at speeds of over 200 kilometers per hour. Uh, to I mean, that that's mechanization as well. The aspect of mechanization, however, that I want to focus on in this video is the internet. Um, because I believe the mechaniz mechanizing force of the internet has had a key role in uh, the increased uh, divorce rates uh, as, on, as a whole, but all specifically in urban areas, because urban areas tend to be more mechanized. And one of the consequences in modernity of the last 10 to 15 years, of course, is a high, uh, high degree of access to the, to the internet. The other element that I'm going to adduce here is an old, old element, and one we've talked about very, very often, namely female hypergamy. In one of the articles that I posted a link to, they talk uh, one plausible explanation for the higher divorce rate, particularly in Denmark, I think it's from the Danish article, 
uh, is that there are more coupling opportunities, more opportunities to meet other people in uh, urban environments. And that's true. It goes without saying. It's kind of a no-brainer. But what does that really mean? It means in concrete terms that an urban environment, by definition, is going to have a higher uh, concentration of people, a greater, a larger population than a rural one. Um, you're gonna also going to have in much more infrastructure, so the ability to meet people is going to be easier. And with internet, well, I'll get to that in a second, uh, the uh, ability, the uh, possibilities to meet people grow exponentially. But what is the driving force behind all of this? The driving force, as usual, uh, is female hypergamy. Now, female hypergamy, as we know, is simply stated just marrying up. Uh, the female, the human female, is driven by uh, an instinctive and um, essentially unconscious desire to constantly uh, increase her status, her own personal status, uh, primarily by means of acquiring a higher status male partner. Uh, this uh, is, they have virtually no control over it. Most women aren't even aware of it, but this is an observable scientific fact. Uh, even the most liberal-minded or the most uh, PC-minded biologist is not going to deny that. And uh, when, I would argue, I think Barbara says as well, that uh, along with mechanization, you often see a loosening or a relaxing of certain laws, or at least the restrictions. Not necessarily that uh, divorce, pe people aren't being encouraged to divorce, but um, as I think, I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but I believe Barbara said something in the effect of some landmark piece of legislation that makes the process easier. Once the process is easier, once you don't need to offer uh, specific reasons, um, divorce rates will shoot up. And in China, of course, they have, just as an example. And uh, if no-fault divorce, uh, which is what we have in the West, is introduced, they'll shoot up even higher. So the, the loosening, the relaxing of the divorce procedure can, of course, contribute to that. Then you have the mechanization. But female hypergamy, why, at the end of the day, uh, in urban environments, uh, is the divorce rate higher? Well, women have more opportunities to exercise their hypergamy. Uh, in a rural area, not only does she not have much opportunity to exercise her hypergamy, her existence could well be tied to that of the man. A divorce, as they mention, by, as the feminist article mentions, could be disastrous to the woman because she would be deprived of opportunity of, of her economic prosperity. Uh, and so we know that women will not divorce if it endangers or jeopardizes their economic prosperity. Um, if they see their economic prosperity being ruined, as we saw in the video on Korea, say so during the 1997 economic cri crisis, they m well could well divorce en masse, as they did, because that saw, saw a rise of uh, divorce of 250% in South Korea. So the correlation between uh, economics uh, and divorce is, uh, well, crystal clear, I think, by now. Hypergamy and social status. Well, social status really, for, for the, in large measure, equates to uh, economic status. Now, that might not have always been the case. In fact, it certainly wasn't always. I imagine in the Neolithic era, when uh, the guy who was, I don't know, six foot three, incredibly strong, powerful, and could beat the crap out of everyone else, I mean, that was the, the so-called alpha male. Um, it was, uh, of course, the, fe the females would, of course, act hypergamy towards that guy. But um, as we developed a trade and barter system, as uh, the world and civilization uh, came into existence, uh, social status became much more of an economic phenomenon than anything else. Now, one thing that... Uh, uh, that is another contributing factor that I see as perhaps uh, even the primary element of, mechaniz of, the, of the mechanizing contribution to this issue, to this problem, is the internet. And uh, it's also responsible for a slow but uh, steady rise in divorce in rural areas. Because the internet allows you to reach out worldwide. It allows you to do anything, essentially, more or less, in terms of communication and interaction with people be on limited scale sometimes, but uh, you can, I could interact in theory with someone in China and he or she can interact with me. 
my subscribers uh, come from all over the world and I'm at the moment based in Germany so I mean there you have it we also know the tendency uh, in the last decade or so uh, for the continual uh, cropping up rise of so-called dating sites I mean they're there are literally thousands of them by now, uh, all of them claiming to offer different uh, advantages and so on and so forth. Um, some of them extremely gynocentric in that only men pay and women don't pay anything. I've seen a couple of those. Some, a very few of them free. Okay, Cupid was one of them. And uh, just for the record, full disclosure is appropriate. In my past incarnation, yes, Stardust had participated in internet online dating. It's not directly relevant to this, but I could tell some uh, funny, funny in a sick way stories about it. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Internet dating allows, uh, well, people to reach out, and it al would allow also rural women to reach out, and we see it. I mean, you, you guys out there, I'm sure, in your when you open up your mailbox, you'll see the stupid advertisements. Uh, for you know, chi loving Chinese Thai brides, looking for caring man, so on and so forth. Of course, they're all looking for that meal ticket, the way to get out, and the internet is the way to do it. And of course, there's always going to be some gullible man who will fall for it. So, the internet, in my assessment, could well be one of the primary factors in mechanization that is driving up the divorce rates in every country at an ever-increasing rate. Um, the r rural areas, of course, have less internet access, although there are plenty of rural women these days looking to get out of there, looking for their meal ticket. Uh, and, of course, uh, they w their means to do that is the internet. After all, they have no other means of doing it. Maybe in earlier times they sent photos with postcards or what have you, but now you just make a profile. Um, interestingly enough, uh, as a sociological experiment, I've looked at some of these sites on occasion. And you do see sometimes divorced rural women, not not too old, mind you. They get married young in their late twenties, uh, which uh, often corresponds to the peak of divorce rates in, in uh, several studies uh, that I've looked at, late twenties uh, across the board in every country, and looking for a new husband, a, a a better man. But as I said, the the yes, in part, the higher concentration of people in urban areas explains higher divorce rates there, obviously. Um, but it doesn't explain the mechanics of what's actually going on. Uh, when people speak of you know, coupling more opportunities, they're mostly speaking of female hypergamy. Uh, women initiate divorce much more frequently than men. Uh, they're much more easily dissatisfied than men. And uh, this, of course, would lead them to uh, seek opportunities uh, elsewhere. Um, so it, it we, it's important to be aware, and I don't know how much how aware you are of this, but the female hypergamous instinct is, is is insatiable. It's it's always there. This is why past societies did did their best to hold it in check. Um, of course, there were much fewer opportunities in past societies and past uh, civilization for uh, females to exercise a hypergamy. To the extent that there were opportunities, well, they did their those societies did their best to hold them in check. Um, with the onslaught of modern feminism and, uh, well, mechanization across the board, across the globe, as well as the loosening and relaxing of laws in formerly traditional countries, uh, or even now we could still call them traditional countries, uh, divorce is just shooting through the roof. Um, and if you, if you, I think if you look at the actual stats, and I have that the uh, it's far less gradual than it was in the West. And so you have, say, in China and South Korea, I mean, the rate that's been increasing is just, it's just incredible. It's, it's almost mind-boggling that it's happening at a much, much faster rate. Part, perhaps also because mechanization has been uh, occurring at a much uh, faster rate. But we, ha we have to, we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, water. we have to look at the, the primary cause so mechanization is, is, a, is an enabling force, but the primary cause of divorce rates is always going to be female hypergamy. Um, I say this really with a uh, sense of almost absolute certainty because female dissatisfaction in, in marriage uh, is usually a manifestation of hypergamy. It's th them not, I mean, we know that women on the whole uh, don't take responsibility for themselves for their own contentment 
and the uh, the responsibility lies then on the um, rests on the shoulders of the man. They then place blame on the man for them being not content, believe that they can find greater contentment in a higher status or what they perceive to be a higher status mate male, and so they initiate divorce. That's usually how it goes, at least no fault divorce. Um, most of the cases, especially in the West, are for frivolous reasons such as dissatisfaction. Um, and uh, that is uh, observable, uh, I think, also in the uh, stats elsewhere. After all, um, even though it's, it's trotted out that it's women are, uh, in, in China and other elsewhere, are sort of uh, are finally freed of their husband's abuses, it's, 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 I think it's more that women have, I mean, yes, some women are working, they have more economic independence, and uh, another, that's another factor I should mention, of course, the economic uh, independence. Economic independence, since marriage is all about economics and it's all about the money, um, you know, the female hypergamy stays intact, but uh, if the money, if the money is uh, there, then uh, for the woman, independent of the man, then those are bad cards for the man. On a final note, I'm going to be uh, posting a link to a, uh, a video. Um, there are no subtitles, however. The esteemed Lord of Caltech, who happens to be Chinese, has uh, done me a favor and translated most of what has gone on in the dialogue. And you'll see in this a Beijing woman on the subway dumping her man because, well, he doesn't have enough money for her. Go figure. Beijing, of course, being <laughs> very, very urban. Uh, so I hope you enjoy that bit. I'll, also, uh, I'll post in the... Um, in the description box, the uh, the transcription of what she uh, what she's talking about, but I, I just wanted to maybe in this particular case nail the lid of the coffin shot finally, uh, and explain the sort of co-mingling of the mechanization effect along with the hypergamy effect. So this should also serve as an explanation uh, to those unfortunately deluded men who believe that by finding a foreign bride, they're going to a submissive Asian wife. I have one gentleman, I believe his name is B.G. Grimm, who is obsessed with this concept, and uh, it, it is a fallacy. Um, that, so if you, the example I cited in the previous video about wisdom through logic is, I, I believe he, beli he lives out in the boonies, in the sticks of the Philippines. Of course, it's a rural environment, there's going to be a much lower divorce rate. But um, no one's going to change female nature anytime soon. And the question I uh, pose to those people who are, those men who are still deluding themselves into thinking that a non Western woman, a, an Asian, submissive Asian wife, as they put it, is the solution to their problems, is that that same submissive Asian wife doesn't really exist. <laughs> uh, it really only cares about what you can do for her, just like every woman. I think it's important that we talk about what some of the core ideals of being part of, of the MRA or just being involved in the MRM or being a, being a man going your own way. In my assessment, one of the most important things, aspects of being a man uh, going your own way is the fact that uh, you recognize that you have value as a person beyond whatever labor you might be able to provide for a female. And because the female only only sees the relationship between man and woman as a economic transaction, usually where she doles out sex for uh, for uh, compensation, um, and as and the man is a utility uh, to satisfy her needs, we we renounce that. And um, to those men who still believe they can find submissive wives, I, I think it, you should bear in mind that those submissive wives do not value your personhood. Uh, any more than the non-submissive ones do. Uh, their hypergamy might be held in check, but, um, well, that's like saying, uh, you know, a rabid, do a rabid pit bull isn't going to bite you because you have a, you know, a heavy leather muzzle on its, on its, on its jaws. I mean, of course it's not going to bite you. It can't bite you. Um, it's the same analogy. Um, it, would, it would bite you if, uh, if it could, but it can't because of certain circumstances. The intention is still there. So maybe it might be that you don't put much stock in intentionality, but uh, I, I know I certainly do, and I know a lot of other men do. 
so yeah th this video I hope look at the stats from from uh, from the UN that uh, you, you can't escape it it's, it is a pan-global phenomenon divorce will continue um, and uh, by now we should have gathered enough information to confirm uh, what I believe is an accurate assessment that marriage uh, is only for idiots um, for to, th to those who have have not sought uh, sought out the information sought to be enlightened if you will um, well, may the gods have mercy on their souls. Uh, they are in extreme danger. There's no doubt about that. Finally, uh, having talked about hypergamy, uh, this is, of course, a pipe dream, but I think uh, that human sexuality, part of uh, learning about human sexuality, if they're going to call it sex education, is not only to learn about the specific mechanics of sticking your dick in a pussy, or putting putting a rubber on on your dick before you stick your dick in a pussy, I mean that's all well and good. It doesn't seem to work very often half the time. But also learning the mechanics of male female interaction, learning about female hypergamy. Now that's not going to happen in a feminized atmosphere because uh, that might speak uh, ill of women, and we don't want to do that since women are purely angelic angelic creatures. But in an ideal situation, set part of sex education would be learning about female hypergamy. Imagine from young boyhood you had learned all this. You would have been much more circumspect in the decisions you had made uh, and the liaisons that you decided to enter into with your women. I know I would have, but of course we don't learn this. We learn, we learn a, well, it's a, the grand delusion. We learn that women are nice, kind, caring, uh, we, which, none of which is true. Um, and the illusion and delusion persists. However, if we had the education, um, that could well have been different, and it could have, things could have turned out differently. We might have had, in many ways, easier lives, and uh, our situation on the whole might have been better. Some of us might have been a lot wealthier, and some of us might have been a little bit wealthier. I know I would have been a little bit wealthier if I had learned all of this. So one important thing we can do, and I often talk about the ultimate futility of well, what we're doing, and in some sense it is on a mass scale. I mean, we're not going to change the way the world works. But empowering young men, specifically boys, with this kind of information, telling them what's really up, I think is one of the most uh, important services, and if not powerful services, we can render unto uh, the coming generation of young men and boys so they actually learn what's, uh, what's going on. Now, if they decide, despite all of this information, to enter into silliness like marriage or serious relationships which lead to marriage, well, that's on their, I mean, then the burden, uh, the burden rests on their shoulders and they need to deal with the consequences. But I'm almost certain that if men, many men, had, could learn at a young age through education, and let's rest assured, education no longer occurs just in school. In fact, it occurs less and less in school. YouTube, the internet, uh, the, the realities of female hypergamy, female solipsism, and the the nefarious commingling of, of those biological factors with uh, state entitlements and social social uh, social welfare that that benefits and prioritizes women's needs over men's, uh, we could go a long way, um, and that's why another reason why I do these videos. I think uh, if we can reach more young boys and men, all the better. It, they don't even have to be young. I'm, I'm not young. Any man who can get hold of this information. Uh, can be a beneficiary of it because um, we need we need to drill this home and you're all you're always going to still have men who will delude themselves and just can't give up the the dream um, and while I'm sympathetic to them uh, that's not the direction we need to uh, go in even without calling yourself a man going your own way I think it's safe to say that more and more men are defecting from the defunct and stupid and pointless institution of marriage simply because there are no benefits uh, for him. I mean, zero. Uh, many people state uh, the following. Uh, in a marriage, uh, a woman has, uh, sorry, a man has uh, obligations and responsibilities and a woman has, uh, well, basically her preference and choices. And that's, uh, that's pretty much true. And that's becoming true across the board. There's no place to flee. You can't even flee to Mongolia anymore. <laughs> so uh, what can I say? Take this information. Uh, distribute this information. 
you know, a final, final note. It's a bit. This is really off the cuff now. We live in a blue pill world. It's obvious. No matter where we live, be it Canada, Germany, South Korea, wherever, and uh, certainly the United States, and we're walking around in a reality that really is the opposite of what we're told. It is the matrix in large measure. But um, to the extent that you can, uh, if you can reach out to men in your personal social circles, I think it's a good thing. Um, you know, most recently I was talking to a friend of mine who would never heard of any of this stuff and it was a real eye-opener for him. And I think, I, I don't like to use the term conversion, but it certainly opened his eyes to, to the greatest del delusion that had ever been, has ever been sold to us. And more and more men are waking up. Now, they're not happy because of it, but it's enough that they're waking up. So, uh, you know, sp spread the word. Uh, it, I mean, kind of like the gospel. Well, spread the word. It, the, the word is important because the more men this message and this information reaches, the more they might uh, start taking care of themselves instead of women. And uh, because it's high time that we start looking after ourselves, looking out, looking after our fellow men. Uh, and uh, I'll just... Uh, recommend an older video of, of Barbara Russell's where he says, uh, welcome to the male race. Well, I think, I think that that's where we're at these days, uh, the male race. You know, w women aren't looking out for our interests. Our fellow men on the whole are not. So it's up to us to take, uh, to take on that torch and, 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 carry, and carry it as long as we can and pass it on. Anyway, that turned a bit longish, so thanks for watching.